everyone, this is Ty Slider here. American. And this is Black Top Convo. So if you haven't already, make sure you follow GTA Sports Network, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, GTA Sports Network on the Twitter. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, GTA Sports LLC, for more content like this. And we're going to go and kick it off with WNBA. Ladies first. Mm-hmm. Mary, what's going on in your world? In uh, w? I mean, so the most recent news today has to do with. Um, Renee Montgomery of the Dream. Uh, uh, yeah, one of the stars, the young up and coming stars in your league, yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, she on. will be sitting out this shortened season um, due to going to um, put some more effort and energy behind the current movement right now with her own organization. Right. So um, I know. Just going off the social media, people have a lot of stuff to say, positive and negative. Um, but I honestly had to um, address some trolls today. Oh, uh, oh. Yeah, I was on Bleacher Report, right? Uh-huh. And um, they just released that statement about what she's planning to do about this season. And of course, you know, typical trolls up there saying, oh, well, it doesn't really matter. She doesn't get paid nothing anyway. Stuff like that. <laughs> so I'm just like, okay. So I'm a. You look a little, look a little tricky right now. You must, you just, <laughs> little, just like, I can't stand people like that. But pretty much, I I'll post a little screenshot of it. But okay, I forgot my little two cents, but y'all see it. But I don't like that stuff, and I don't always like be the one to respond to each and every little thing because it's just it's endless at this point and people are going to just say stuff just because well when, when not to i know you kind of kind of reliving the moment right now <laughs> yeah. let's pull you back it's okay this is a safe space <laughs> let's let check this out when this the society we live in can give trolls like a six nine a platform to make a lot of money being a troll, a professional troll. This man is signed to be a troll. This gives the up and coming trolls on the come up the idea that if I say the right comment mm -hmm. to the right person, right. I'm going viral. I'm going to be famous. Right. So sometimes I believe, and if you have experienced any trolls out there, world, uh, you know, back me up on this and leave a comment. Let me know how you feel about trolls. I believe they don't mean what they say. They just saying it because it's a trigger. You being a woman, a woman of color, as they, as, as 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 Karen would say, a Karen would tell you, you're a woman of color, person of color, black. But anyway, um, you know, I feel like it's it's one of those things where. They didn't mean what they said. And the ones that do are basically ignorant to the fact that women are just as good, if not better, than men in basketball. And I'm going on record to say this because I feel like it's one of those conversations that people like to have off the camera, but I'm, I'm giving it to you live and direct. There are women out there that are better than some current NBA players and not getting paid for what they can bring to the court day in and day out. They train just as hard, if not harder. They, they push themselves, their bodies to limits beyond measure, just like the men, if not harder. And, you know, a woman like Renee Montgomery, she gets the utmost respect for taking a stance and what she believes in. And we're all about supporting beliefs, um, supporting movements that are about bettering and improving the conditions of black people all over the world. Um, starting here in America, which is supposed to be the land of the free. So they say. Um, however, and not just because this is supposed to be a, a conversation, or it could be a debate, if you will. I slightly disagree with the stance only because, not because of the purpose. The purpose is right. The timing is right for what she wants to represent. However, the league that she represents, the Atlanta Dream is the franchise of the Women's National Basketball Association. A league that, again, as I mentioned in our pilot episode, is not really in the financial position as a league in its entirety. 12 teams, 144 players, 
you know, not including the coaching staffs and, and trainers and so on and so forth. I don't feel like the league is in a current financial position to really afford the loss of a talent like a Renee Montgomery, a player who can be very impactful on a team with, you know, Tip Hayes and, and you know, the list goes on, just to name a, a couple of players that really represent the team. She's a face. She is one of the franchise cornerstones, if you will. And if you, you know, disagree, you know, you know feel free to chime in. But I just believe that her loss on the, on the team in its return could potentially be a domino effect, as I mentioned to you off the camera. Um, <laughs> and other key players will possibly decide to join her in this, this, this motion. And I'm all for that because unity is going to make waves. Unity is going to bring change. It might not bring it overnight. It might not bring it in the fashion and expectation that we may set for ourselves when we define change because everybody's definition of love is different. Everybody's definition of change varies depending on the person because we all got our own vision, our own set of eyes. You know what I'm saying? But again, um, the purpose, the, the passion is in the right place. She means well, and I support that on behalf of my sister. Because black people have been mistreated, undervalued, unappreciated, and disrespected for far too long to continue on this path that we've been on. And as a black man that has black boys as my children, I want change. I want them to live in a better world than what we live in currently. I want them to be able to go outside and play and not worry about a cop shooting them for just being a kid. I want better for them. So the fact that players are stepping up and wanting change over taking over a championship, they're choosing change over championships. I can respect that as a man, as a black man, I can respect that. And I understand there's going to be some financial losses along the way, there's going to be some sacrifices. And I think the women understand that. But I want the women to also look at the big picture like, hey, if you're going to do this, just know what you're signing up for. Be, be, uh, be, <coughs> you know, be in solidarity. Have the majority, because again, like I mentioned before to you, the WNBA is majority black as well. That's no secret. Mm -hmm. Like the NBA. Um, so majority should rule in this. I feel like they all should stand together and do it, but just know that it's going to cost the league and the league's already in the hole. So what is, like, if you, could be in that meeting again. I'm, I'm putting you in this boardroom with, with Kathy Ingleberg, for instance. Like, I want you to be in this room, and she's saying, "What can I do as your commissioner? What can I do to make this situation more comfortable?" Because I know you mentioned your thoughts on the bubble, and we're going to get into that a little later. Um, the women are essentially going to be in a bubble as well. Mm -hmm. So, how can Kathy Ingleberg, as your commissioner? I don't know details of their bubble. I would imagine just going off of previous situations and experiences, not to compare, but that's my disclaimer. I would imagine their rules would be similar to NBA. They're looking at their big brothers in the NBA and pretty much going to follow suit. The only difference is they're not going to be in Disney World because it's a smaller group of people. The league is a lot smaller, really less than half of the size of the NBA. <coughs> less roster spots, less coaching staff. They can pretty much do it in, I would imagine, a smaller hotel setting. And um, I would imagine the rules would be very, very similar. And the losses that you're going to take by not playing could have a longer lasting impact on your league because your league is young and it doesn't have the financial backing or the fan base to really withstand losing a season just for Black Lives Matter. That's not me. Again, if I mean this, because I'm all for it, but it, just know what you're giving up. Just know that you're with a little bit of progress you have made as women in the basketball world could be lost forever. The league could not, I don't think it can sustain this type of hit, personally. Mm -hmm. And y'all don't have the money to go out and start your own league like the men do. Unless you, my recommendation while I'm on the topic, the same men, the Damian Lillards, the Dwayne Wade, the LeBron James, the ones that know you guys don't make money in the league when you go pro, that you make overseas, those are the people that need to be on the conference call and saying, hey, while you guys are deciding whether you guys are going to break up your CBA and branch off and do your own thing, 
don't forget about us because we also need help putting something together for us as women. And they don't have the salary and contracts to really pull their money together and make a league. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just the reality. They don't even have it like that. So what can Kathy do to make you feel more comfortable going to IMG Academy? If you was a player on a roster like say the Atlanta Dream or even Indiana Fever, and you were one of those 12 players on a roster and you have concerns, I can see it on your face. I, I know you got some concerns about being all in one spot at the same time in the midst of a pandemic and social unrest. How can your commissioner make you feel comfortable playing in these conditions? If it's I mean, even possible. Me personally, I'm not sure <laughs> I mean, I would definitely want to know the details of the women's bubble. Mm. Like, are they going to have tracking devices too? Me personally, I think so. Cause I think Silver and Kathy are on those conference calls together trying to put it together. And I'm imagining being at the NBA is funding the W that they're going to expect a similar protocol, if not the exact same protocol that the men have just to keep it fair. Because if they don't, then the men could be like, wait a minute. Why am I wearing an ankle device? Why am I wearing a ring? Well, how come they're not wearing a ring? Mm. More property value. Mm, nah. I mean, <laughs> the, thing, the thing is though, when I was reading, they said the ring was to being used because uh -huh. uh, it would detect. I gotta hear this. It would detect COVID nineteen three days before whatever, whatever. Can you throw that? Do we have do we have do we have doctors on do we have can we get a doctor on the call? Yeah, it all sounds just like huge question mark. It's just iffy. Question mark. That, that's a that's a light way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's that's PG. Listen. <laughs> your face saying something else. Question mark. That ain't what your face is telling me, yo. Your face is speaking volumes right now, yo. I don't like it. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I know you. I've known you for quite some time, right? Mm. But they don't know you like I do. So <laughs> I, I want you to break down this, this this big question mark you have about these tracking devices or uh, COVID detectors that will detect or go off if you're around somebody and not social distancing <laughs> for five seconds. So or if, longer. If they miraculously have this technology. <laughs> And it's good enough to put an NBA player <laughs> at this time. How long COVID's been going on? Why don't the rest of us, or why you know, why wasn't it discussed with the rest of the public? Like, oh, we got this. Hey, yo, shout out to Cappy Poindexter for this. One. Yo, she 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 went in on this on this this Twitter post where she basically was just feeling like, look, women do not want to be treated as guinea pigs. It's an experiment. All of it is. The whole thing. And the fact that if they're not going to give them the same like devices, that's really just saying like, okay, like I said, property value. And if, if you know, that's all I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get into that. I don't want to get into that. Oh, oh, that's you gonna do it like that? I am cold. You not going to? Wait a minute. Wait. Oh, oh, so you you you, you going too deep? You cut to yeah, because that's just a whole nother. That's a whole nother. <laughs> a whole nother uh, rabbit hole. Oh man! So, ladies and gentlemen, let me explain something to you. Uh, I understand she, for 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 network purposes, we'll because we'll, you know you took my way and pulled this video that you went on that level. So let's 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 go ahead and, and shift shift gears for a second. The WNBA. Um, since we're still technically on the ladies first, and I, 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 I do have a question to ask you. Mm -hmm. Enlighten me. Do you know how many players out of the 144 active roster players are making a million dollars or more? Mm -hmm. Do you count? Do you know how many you think are making a million or more? Because I, I, to my knowledge, it's only a handful that's really hitting a million or more on their contracts. WNBA contract only, right? Yes, when I talk about shoot deals, I know it's probably even smaller number of them they got shoot deals. I think I'm kind of just referring to when they play uh, like the season. No, see, and, 
we gonna get to that. We yeah, hold yeah. that. I, I knew that part, and I I wanted them to understand. The women took a huge loss when COVID kicked off because their seasons overseas got canceled, so that affected their their big payday, their 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 main source of income. So help them understand if you could give them a percentage. This is just, you know, your, your, um, to your knowledge. I know it's a small number. I want them to understand it from a woman's perspective. If you could give a number, obviously from 1% to 100% or whatever, what would you estimate the percentage of all the women in the WNBA that are making a million or more? Just strictly WNBA. We're not even talking about overseas. We're talking about just for the W. Off the top of my head, I don't know. I can't give an accurate number. No, no, no. I, just, I, guess I, definitely, estimate. definitely less than five percent. Okay. With that. I only asked you that because you weren't with me when I did the podcast with Tom. I said I I was giving them the benefit of that. And I said maybe ten percent, but less than ten. Because I know for a fact that there's only probably maybe two or three that got shoe deals. I know Maya Moore got her deal before she uh, retired. To do you know especially what's going on right now social change and you know making impacts in the community and i know i think ella del don got a shoe deal if i'm not mistaken help me on now think I, i'm pretty sure she got one i know she was working with a shoe she was helping create a shoe but i don't know if it was her official line or if she got a deal but i do know that the women deals are not the same as the men's you know there's nobody walking around with a lebron lifetime nike deal in the w you know what I'm saying? To keep it real, there's nobody walking around with a Zion deal with Jordan that he got when he got signed. You know what I'm saying? I know it's not the same structure. So that being said, we, we, we just don't talk about strictly money. The women are making regular salaries that people like people like you and me make, mm-hmm. and that's what Cap was saying in her video was like. Dude, nobody watches women's basketball, so you're basically doing it for nothing. And she and, and, and it kind of, it kind of, I felt conflicted because I'm like, you're a legend of the W. The W mm-hmm. made you a legend. You're a legend in Chicago. You're a legend just as a ball player. Mm-hmm. We just like take the gender out of it. You're just a legendary ball player, right? You're retired, freshly retired. So for her to come out and say it the way she said, I don't know if it's just because she's brash with her message, but it kind of came off like, are you throwing shots at the W? Like, like why, like, like, why would she come about it that way? I understood her position of standing with Kyrie Irving, mm-hmm. but her way of saying like nobody watches the W anyway. I don't know if it was just her trying to be like, like <coughs> brutally honest, but it kind of was like. And we're back. This is Ty Slater here with GTA Sports and this is Black Top Combos. I'm here with Mary King and we were touching on ladies first in regards to the WNBA attempting to make its return at the IMG Academy down in Florida. However, there has been a few, I could say, bumps along the way, some overly growing concerns and even some players that are opting out of playing like Renee Montgomery who made her statement as of today, June 18th saying she's not playing and why she's not playing. She's standing for what she believes is right. She's standing for what she feels in her heart. And we have nothing but love and respect for our sister out there. You know, fight the right fight. You wanna be on the right side of history? I'm all for it. Just understand the repercussions and ramifications that come along with that when it comes to your league and the status of your league when all the dust settles, if the W even is around when all this is all said and done. So like, I'm look, I'm a forward thinker. And I, the only reason I brought that up is because our first conversation we had, me and you touched on a lot of things that I don't think the world quite knew what was going on. Yet. I don't think the world picked up on the possibility of players deciding to leave major franchises, major current leagues that are mainstream and mm-hmm. taking their millions of dollars and million dollar worth of influence, fan bases, followers and deciding to say hey if they don't love and respect black people and black lives since our lives don't matter to them why should we keep playing for them mm-hmm. we had these conversations and i don't know if youtube is 
prepared for where we go sometimes because me and you we we go way back and i think our our level of understanding of the game goes above and beyond just playing a game of basketball um all the details that they're releasing as far as like the terms of them all living in this bubble and playing mm -hmm. um there's a lot of questions like flags that went off in my head right. can you touch on some of those been pieced out Cause I'm, cause, like, because and not to cut you off i know you've been going to but i just want to make sure that they understand basketball fans don't pay attention to signs they just want to see their sports come back. I understand their position because I felt that too at first, mm -hmm. prior to Kyrie Irving statements that were made and things that he had to kind of re backpedal and recant because if he said too much, right. I felt like the owners would have tried to do to Kaepernick him basically. And I mentioned this on the podcast with Tom that basically Kyrie Irving was on the brink of being Kaepernick mm -hmm. out the league because if he did admit to saying we should start our own league. Right. I think the owners would have had the Muslim because now, now you're really affecting the bottom line because all the players, you have influence. You're one of the most popular players of this current generation. So if you lead the revolt of we should start our own league. And we're going to talk about the NBA. But what we're going to talk about is the rules within the bubble at Disney World. Now, ESPN has done a, what I would consider a fabulous fluff job when it comes, and, and those immediately know what I mean when I say fluff. The, the, the announcement of the NBA is back. The NBA is going to Disney World. They did it exactly the way parents would when we were kids when they asked us if we wanted to go see Mickey Mouse. We wanted to go to Animal Kingdom. We wanted to go see the Lion King, Cinderella, Snow White. I feel like ESPN being that is owned by Disney did a great job in pushing this narrative. Mm -hmm. You gotta sell it. Oh, they sold it. Cause mm -hmm. I, they cause episode thirty-eight, he checked. I titled it "The NBA Is Back" because I was excited just as a fan of the game. This was before the Kyrie Irving announcement and conference calls and all the unraveling that transpired within days after LeBron and Sil Adam Silver, which is what's commissioner of the NBA, if you guys don't know, had got on the conference call and made the announcement that they all were ready to go. Mm -hmm. A lot of things transpired from that conference call because there were a lot of players and voices were not heard right. through that conference call. Well, ESPN has given us the flip side of the coin here recently in the last 24 to 48 hours. Shout out to Rachel Nichols and uh, Kendrick Perkins over at the jump. Um, they mentioned the rules. Some of the features and terms and conditions of this season resume. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about having grown men, grown black men, might I add. And I have to put the emphasis on that because of the climate that we're in right now. And the league is 85% black, so let's just go ahead and call spade a spade. These players that are in Disney World with golf, resorts, jacuzzis, food, unlimited amounts of food, whatever you want to do. Movie theaters, movie screens. They, they, they showed us all this when they sold it to us. Check out the fine print. Oh no! <laughs> oh, you grab your magnifying glass with the fine Oh, they 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 pulled a fast when they unveiled some things. Like here's a here's a positive part. They oh, give okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, right, right. The ice cream, the candy. Yeah, cones. they got us excited. Oh, don't do the aisle. Oh, no, no, because um, <laughs> she's only reason, for the record. Only reason she's doing that is because. When the announcement first dropped, she had this gut instinct that something was just off. Mm -hmm. Something wasn't right. Something was rotten in Denmark. Or in this case, Orlando. Mm -hmm. The resort just didn't feel right. And it's not because she's grown and she's not a kid anymore. <laughs> like she's just like she's, something's wrong with Mickey. Mickey ain't the same no more. You know? But players, 
obviously have to do social distancing. Uh, the whole world is in a state of social distancing. Now, whether some states are doing better than others, some cases have gone up, some cases have subsided a little bit or at least leveled off or plateaued. But in order to keep the players in these hotels safe, what they claim. They have come up with the solution to keep them socially distanced. And one would basically call this an ankle bracelet because it's basically a GPS tracker that supposedly checks your temperature, right? So it checks your temperature for COVID. And but it can detect up to three days or something before. In advance, supposedly. Something that I've never, I didn't even know we even had that technology. It's already some military type of thing. But uh, I digress. But also, if you get within six feet of another player, for five seconds or longer, apparently it notifies and goes off. Just like really? an ankle bracelet. Just like an ankle, like if you were on house arrest and you got a GPS tracker, mm -hmm. as soon as you go within out of that radius, it goes off. Well, in this case, if you're within six feet of another player for too long, it goes off and they're notified. And speaking of notifications, this is the part that got me. They announced an anonymous hotline. Oh, yeah, that's the alarm. <laughs> what? I almost need to take a break. That's just to get my, just to get my bed. L listen, <laughs> players obviously had their opinions about the snitch hotline. Mm -hmm. Um, I've seen a lot of memes dropping within the last twenty four to forty eight hours about how players feel about this anonymous uh, tip line. I'm gonna just keep it real with you. If I was involved with the National Basketball Association, I would have to just go ahead and throw my hat in the towel. I'd just go ahead and just go ahead and just let my team go ahead and go to Orlando without me. Because at this point, Walt Disney World sounds like, I, I'll be honest with you, it sounds like a combination of house arrest and the country club. Um, in simple terms, country club is for, it's a prison term for those that have not done vicious, violent crimes, but more like hacking into computers, bank accounts, and, you know, more tech. tech the white tech, collar crimes. White collar crimes. Mm -hmm. um, that's what it sounds like to me. I feel like these hotel settings and, and all the amenities that they're offering for them to stay at Walt Disney World for three months without their families, because I was told by reports that family would not be allowed until playoffs. So for the first eight games or first or second round, no families allowed. But then they get followed along, you know, I guess depending on how the COVID, you know, conditions are. Hopefully nobody catches it and everything works out. They'll allow family to come. How much family? I was told immediate. Like a handful, wife and kids, maybe friend or two. But not, nothing. They haven't that's given out specific. Yeah. Nothing extravagant. Not, a, not the whole squad. Not, not, not draft night. You can't get the whole. Can't get the whole table full of people. Just the immediate thing. Um, again, this is where we're at right now. But I, I personally, I, I do feel like it's very um, uncomfortable. I'm, I'm just not really a. a a comfortable feeling, very unease feeling about having all of these prominent players at Disney World while their families are back home in the midst of civil unrest, rioting, protesting, demonstrations, people, black men still being killed by police every day. You see what happened to Rashard Brooks in Atlanta, you know, rest in peace to him as well. Uh, it's just another example of what can't go wrong, will go wrong as long as people continue to do wrong. Mm -hmm. And I think having all these prominent black men who are fathers, husbands, brothers, being all in this boat with if this COVID thing really is as major as they're making it seem in reports and doctors and, and media, I would think the risk is greater than the world. But the thing is, like like you said, it's business and it comes down to the economic side of it for them mm -hmm. because the owners and whatnot are the ones 
mainly concerned about losing money. And if we're still deemed, quote unquote, you know, I ain't gonna say that word. No. But okay. it, to me, it's just like, going back historically, we've always kind of been the guinea pigs or the experiments. And this is like a huge social experiment on a huge, huge scale with prominent people you know community. i have a term i would like to say but i don't know if it fits because this is supposed to be a sports podcast for independent sports network black on the course but <laughs> population control comes to mind but i ain't gonna do all that today i ain't, I ain't you know that we are gta sports network uh so I gotta, I gotta, I gotta keep it PG for the, for the listeners. You know, I might have some little kids up there. You know, about that. Do you, as Cameron would say, do you Googles? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like look, yo, um, that is Black Top Convos, episode number two. Check out episode one, the pilot at GTA Sports LLC. Subscribe to the YouTube channel today. And make sure you follow GTA Sports Network, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, GTA Sports Network on the Twitter. Check out the interviews, articles, podcasts, GTA Heat Check, my man Tom. You know what I'm saying? It's Ty Slider. And American. Until next time, we out.